I am pretty sure our next panelist have a lots of thoughtful ideas are going to uh, bring together on stage. So we have decided to offer you different perspectives on this topic of sustainability and um, from uh, Brands Media Agency, Digital Media Association, Public Benefit Corporation. Our guests are coming from a little bit of every, every side. Please welcome again Andrew Hayward Wright, Steel Partnership Director at Synthesis and Programmatic Advisor at IAB Europe, Brian O'Kelly, CEO and co-founder of Scop3, Laura Wade, Head of Sustainability at Essence, Gonzalo Gonzalez Sola, Global Head of Marketing, Marketing and Digital Sales Project Lead at BBVA, and Alexander Keok, Vice Chairman of BVDW. Big applause for our panel, please. <laughs> Hi. And I think, yeah, I'm sorry, okay. Alexander. I can reintroduce you because you did not get any chance to enjoy the applause. Yeah, another one, hey. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I think this was the first contribution to sustainability. We just have as many headsets as we really need, and therefore I had to change with my uh, before speaker. And um, yeah. <laughs> Same for us. Nice. Thank you all for joining the stage. Uh, we have um, had the pleasure to hear Andrew and Adam introducing perfectly the topic. Maybe we can um, introduce ourselves, or you can introduce yourself, in order for um, everyone to know you a little bit better, to know where is sustainability in your day-to-day -day business and your, in your list of priorities. Would you like to, to begin? OK, yeah, sure. Um, I'm Alex Kiok. Um, I'm yeah, from the IAB section in Germany. Uh, the so-called BVDW, and um, yeah, we we have as an organization uh, the, uh, the the topic of uh, sustainability is a very very crucial one. Um, in our organization, we have put it to a let's say higher or more complex, more sophisticated uh, level with our corporate digital responsibility initiative. But um, in the end, sustainability I think is the biggest driver for for any economic uh, venture in the. Um, in the, in, the, in the future and also today. So um, this is one of the most important things. And we think and we strongly believe that digital or digitalization uh, is um, the biggest driver for sustainability steps and impact because um, there are so many companies, even with our uh, members, uh, that um, are able to, um, yeah, to contribute to sustainability and make when did it begin a real subject within the uh, Dutch association? You know, when exactly? When when we when started? did it begin? Uh, oh. um, um, actually, as I'm just um, attending four years in this chair, um, I uh, I think from my first day on, I think even before, so five years, six years, but uh, let's say. A big push it became um, during, of course, the Fridays for Future um, and, and having the public eye on sustainability issues, on the climate crisis that much. And um, definitely we, we had some issues around the pandemic as well. Mm. Um, that was um, both uh, positive and negative as well for the climate issue or the sustainability issue. Thank you. Right around you, uh, Gonzalo Gonzalez Sola. Can you please tell us? Yes, of course. So, what are you doing? Uh, good morning, everybody. So nice to be here with all of you. Um, I work in BBVA. Okay, BBVA is a Spanish bank uh, that we operate globally. And basically, uh, we say that today sustainability is one of our top priorities in the bank. And the role that we want to play on on this journey that all the companies and all the customers have to take is that we help that people and that companies uh, do the transition for the sustainability, okay? So if you want to buy, a, if you're a customer and you want to buy a, an electric car, we finance that electric car. If you are a company and you have to set up your uh, company toward the sustainability, we help you. First, we, we, we have a part that we advise you how to do it, and second, we finance you and we help you to do that transition. Okay. okay, so basically that is one of our main topic that we are doing and it's one of the priorities based on that it's also a business driver for us, okay, and all the banks are playing a, a key role in this transition. 
I guess so. Uh, Lisa, you're the only woman with me. Thanks for being here. Yeah, so my name's Laura Wade, and I'm Head of Sustainability at Essence. Um, I actually pitched to the Global Exco last January that we needed a Head of Sustainability role. And I think that's for two reasons. Personally, for 20 years I've worked in partnerships and content and sponsorships, and that's all about identifying the trends, cultural context that we're operating in. And for me, the biggest cultural context we're operating in is the climate emergency. And for me, it's really evident that this is going to shape and be as transformational or even more transformational than digital. So that's how I pitched the role. Um, I moved into it in January. And then from a more professional point of view, Group M have committed to be net zero by 2025 20, operationally. And probably more importantly for this group is that we've committed to net zero across our supply chain by 2030. And to be really clear, net zero is a reduction of emissions by up to 90% and then the rest offset. Um, so that means by 2030, all of our media plans will need to be net zero. So publishers, ad tech, everything that touches our media plans will need to be on that journey with us. Okay, thank you very much, Alora. Uh, around you, Brian O'Kelly. Hi there. CEO I'm of Scope 3. Sorry. Brian O'Kelly. Um, I guess I'm a reformed ad tech entrepreneur at this point. Uh, after selling my last company, AppNexus, uh, in 2018, I tried to figure out what to do with the rest of my life and uh, realized that this industry that we all have created and lived in for the past 20 years has a huge impact on the environment. And I was inspired by what Google's done for three decades, inspired by WPP and Essence and companies that have made these aggressive commitments to decarbonize. And I realized that this industry was lacking uh, an authoritative data source. How much carbon do we use every day? What does it mean to buy one impression or a thousand or a million? What actions can we take as an industry that will reduce carbon? And uh, the revelation I had is that we have all the technology we need to fully decarbonize. This can be the first net zero industry in the world. What we need is we need everybody across the industry, all the groups that Laura just mentioned, to take action. We need IABs, the IAB Tech Lab, I'm pointing at you, Tony, to go <laughs> put net zero as a top priority for our organizations. We need to work together. We need innovative technology, like we have some seen this. We need innovative marketers to make sustainability a key priority and to work with their agencies. And you know, in our little world, uh, my company, Scope3, we're going to provide the data and some of the infrastructure to make this transformation possible. Thank you. And sorry about calling you, Lisa. Uh, Andrew, we, you already talked about sustainability, but maybe yeah. you can talk a little bit about you yeah. since this and um, the way you accompany, uh, what you, you, yeah, your tech, you wrote through this subject too. Yeah, absolutely. So I have two, two hats today. Uh, so from an IAB perspective, I think what, what Brian just said is absolutely correct. IAB Europe, IAB Tech Lab, the role there is potentially around policy and educating and bringing people together to collaborate, whether it be measurement or standards or anything like that. Um, and we should see more movement in the coming months um, in, in that space. And then from, from seeing this perspective, some of the partnerships director at, at seeing this, so that's uh, seeing this is a, a streaming infrastructure company that looks at um, how and when we should send data, in particular the digital assets of ad, ads across the internet um, in the best optimized way to reduce the energy consumed by them, and therefore reducing the carbon from them as well. OK. Uh, so you mentioned it. We do have a problem, kind of a little or a huge problem. <laughs> um, my question would be, how mature do you think the industry is regarding this problem? During the prep call, Loha, you mentioned that you took this position at Essence about two years ago. And it is a new job that yep. um, your company has created, which is yep. a super good point. I am not sure every company has a head of sustainability yet. But that it seems to me that um, maybe, say maybe, the digital advertising um, industry or the advertising industry, the communication industry, is not really um, in, in, you know, in advance in, in matters of sustainability. How, how, what do you think? Um, I think it's been really interesting being here today and, seeing, and, and yesterday and seeing all the talks. I think it's kind of a well-known stat that 80% of an environmental and societal impact is in the design of a product. 
And it's been great hearing people talk about new ad tech, new ways to design how our industry works, but not one time have they talked about sustainable pr principles in that design. And I think that's probably our biggest barrier because we're carrying on with business as usual and using sustainability as a, a nice to have or a parallel work stream. And really what we need to be doing is embedding sustainability at the forefront of our decisions and when we're designing our products. So I think that's the biggest barrier for us to embrace it. And I think to add to that, uh, that I think all the companies from all the industries are seeing uh, sustainability as an obligation, not an option. Okay, so that is why it's, it's in, in all the agenda of all the companies. Okay, so we have to see that if it's an obligation for everybody, we have to put it in the agenda and we have to build a plan in order to set up those issues that we have. Okay, so that is, I think, really important on, on all the companies today. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, you, we mentioned calculator like foot, um, carbon footprint impact and the way we have to uh, measure measure things before getting done any any progress. Um, do you think that now, when every one of you, well, obviously you, you do, but do have a good overview of um, the the problem and where you can begin to take the first step? Um, I I'd say no. Um, I think that we don't have the transparency um, because actually um, even with this community here, um, yesterday there was so much talk about growth, 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 growth. It's very old KPI, old school KPI um, and we have to come to a new mindset regarding that um, and I think that there is not much transparency. I was very thankful for your introduction um, where the, the, the carbon footprint takes place or is produced or is generated and I don't think that there is complete transparency around that. For example, this is think before you send. Yeah, I mean everyone has the think before you print in his mind but that's not the issue. It's, it's around what, what you said. The difference between 100 million newsletters sent and 1 million quite well targeted is, is immense, it's, it's 100 times. So, and, and, and think, people do, do not think um, that, they, uh, that there's a cost to the planet of what they do because it's just digital. They can send it and it, it doesn't provoke any costs in the old thinking, mm. the old way of thinking, but it does, definitely, as, as mentioned. But I think, I don't, I don't personally don't think that there's transparency enough around this, so we have to, to keep on talking about this. Brian, you are dealing with uh, companies every day to help them in, in this, um, in this uh, subject. Do you think they are um, well informed? I think that this is such a complicated universe. I mean, if you think of the internet, uh, you're right that doing 100 million newsletters is more than a million, but is that a meaningful way to reduce our carbon footprint? And you know, if you listen to Google talk about how all their data centers are carbon neutral, they buy a ton of renewable energy, you're only touching their renewable energy sources when you send those newsletters to Gmail or to someone using Outlook. Microsoft's made huge investments. Facebook's buying every wind farm and solar farm they can find. So I'm unconvinced that we fully understand the implications of this. And I think as a consumer, I know that when I buy my Allbirds shoes, they actually have inside a carbon label. And it says that these shoes cost 7.1 kilograms of carbon, including the full life cycle. And if I recycle them or give them to someone, it's gonna be lower. I think every product needs to have a carbon label. Every ad tech product has to have a carbon label. Every media owner needs to provide carbon labels. In our industry, that's the solution. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is provide a common standard for that so that we know that if you choose seeing this, you'll see less carbon than if you use a different provider. But that will incentivize your competitors to do the same thing. And you're gonna inspire a whole industry to ask questions about their carbon footprint. And that's the thing that all of us can do. Demand carbon labeling, use carbon labeling, build it into every reporting tool, build it into every DSP, every exchange, everybody needs to make carbon a part of every business decision. And then we will have that transparency. I wanna know when I go to MailChimp and send my newsletter, 
And not to brag, I have 180 subscribers on the Scope 3 newsletter. Like, this is a lot. 180. <laughs> Maybe at 181, if anyone wants to sign up. But I'd like to know what the impact is, and I think that's the thing. Every click we make, every product we buy, $7.1 trillion of, of consumer purchases were influenced by advertising last year in the US, just to create a stat that I read today. How much of that $7.1 trillion of consumer demand is being informed by carbon? We can literally change that more than anybody else in the entire world. That's right, yeah. yeah. Somebody want to react? <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I think we, we envisage a future, I would hope, hope in the next sort of 12 to 24 months, where we're operating with not only a client's financial budget, but a carbon budget. And we're not going to sacrifice on quality, but we are going to start looking at carbon efficiencies. And I think what we need to be really mindful of is media decarbonisation is one lever that we can pull. But to touch on the point about the carbon that's generated by all the sales as well, we need to also address car uh, consumer behaviour. And I think um, consumer behaviour is a key lever as marketers that we need to start to, to think about. So sort of media decarbonisation and then sustainable behaviours are something that we need to adopt. Yeah. And I think also consumers at the moment, we're getting off lightly because consumers aren't joining the dots in terms of the carbon footprint of the advertising or the media they consume. And um, yeah, they're, not, they're just not joining the dots. And it was quite interesting in the UK that, and I know a lot of us are experiencing the energy crisis, but last week there was a, a billboard advert and someone had spray painted over it. This billboard is using the energy of three homes. And I think the energy crisis is starting to make consumers a bit more literate on like how valuable energy is. And I think it's predicted in this decade that 5% of global energy will be consumed by data centers. And that starts to bring in the conversation of what is our societal value as a sector? What, what, how do we have a social license to operate in a net zero world? And we need to, we need to start doing that now. We, need to, we don't have to have the answers, but we need to start asking ourselves that question so we can make the right choices and, and, and evolve. And how do you do to have, an, uh, how do you make everyone in your company Ha trying to have an impact. For example, you are head of you are head of sustainability in a media agency. How do you, yeah, take this subject into every department of your yeah. company? So, so I started my role in January, and there's three pillars of my role. So the first is behaviour change. So that was Climate 101 training. So basically, I scared and upset most of our staff with the reality of the climate emergency, <laughs> but then gave them the solutions of well, actually, we need to think bigger. We need to reimagine what the future is. The circular economy means potentially that it's no longer about short-term growth and products, but services and, and you know, sort of longer-term brand building. Then we have the output, our work that we produce. So again, that's media decarbonisation. So then it's like, what products, what are our hotspots? 80% of our, our digital is programmatic, hence why me and Brian started to have a conversation. How do we, how do we address that biggest carbon hotspot? And, We work, we've seen this for our creative as well to reduce that impact. And then the third part is influence. And it, it, the influence not only of the conversations we need to have with clients, and again, not necessarily having the answers, asking the questions, but industry bodies and um, the, the influence that we can have um, on the campaigns that we work in. And, and it's empowering every individual to feel that they have the ability to at least ask the question and understand a bit more what they can do. Okay. And Gonzalo, yeah, how do you make it go? I think internally it's key the, what is said about educating people, okay? and, and that is key. And of course we measure our impact as a company, but today if I see from a media plan working with the agency, I still don't perceive uh, that they translate us the importance of having media plans with the, with the carbon footprint measure. And I think that's something that the industry has to move forward in order to have it. Okay? But I think also it's really important that internal education that I say, but also the external education. Okay, so everybody talks about sustainability from the green side, okay, but we have to also think on, on the social side, okay, and that yeah. is also really important to manage it in, on, on the both parts of sustainability. So I think companies will address first the part of the green, the green part, okay, because it's the one that everybody relates today on sustainability. But I think also the role that we have to play as companies is to educate consumers, okay? So that is, in our case, we are building uh, uh, a content strategy based on sustainability. 
on the main basic questions that a person can do and, and we are running with, with a really SEO strategy on what consumers are, they are asking and that is the, the first step that we have uh, set up in order to position ourselves in that space of the sustainability. Okay, and we do know that we have to do less and less. We have to to, to send less and less messages, and maybe maybe to use less and less video, as we we perfectly understood from the key figures we heard. Are you ready uh, for that next step? Are you ready uh, as an advertiser to to, um, to use are. less? I think everybody is prepared, but we need help, and and I think everybody in the industry has to help the the companies in order to give important, how to measure it, standardize all the indicators, and I think that would help. I think companies want to do it, but in a lot of cases, they don't know how to do it. Yeah, and, and this is exactly what we do on our side, try to do this best practice and, and try to do transparency and, and, and yeah, even um, reinforce uh, sustainability contributions and, and actions uh, on our member side. This is what we do. Uh, we have some cases in our membership already that we really push and and and, and yeah tell. Yeah. And um, showing the way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, you, we have to take the next step from education to action, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not that easy because there are so many ways to do it. But then you have to prioritize, and then you have to. Um, pick the right way in order to make a b big impact. And for example, you begin by saying that uh, behavior is not going to change so, so fast. But for example, we now all switch off the light when we leave our house and get off the, the water while we're showering. So why don't you think this is an option for internet behaviors? Uh, well, I think it goes to the point I made around the way in there's two parts of it. There's a way that society is geared on consuming more and more and more, and then our industry has a part to play in that, in the way in which our industry is structured of more volume, addressable, scalable audience, as like more more frequencies like that you reach the user, more saturation and stuff like that. So that plays a massive part in being able to change our industry is to be able to take a step back and maybe go actually more is not better, and we should be looking at do we need to be delivering so many ads on a page, for example, from a publisher perspective or from the media agency's perspective, looking at those KPIs of like, do I need this mass volume versus what is the carbon input and out or output of it as well? So I think that that's a challenge. And then the societal one is, 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 is I guess, a bigger problem as, as we've got the rise of TikTok and all of the video content and stuff like that, um, which makes it very difficult. I think one of the challenges that we, we face as an industry, like touching on the transparency stuff, is the consistency around the measurement. And obviously, Brian, you're very focused in, in that area. I think there's, so, from conversations that I've had, uh, seen this and we talk about like our carbon reduction and stuff, and they're like, that's, that's brilliant. We love it. However, they're scared because of the greenwashing effect. And um, they don't want to put a foot forward or a foot out of line to be the next brand or advertiser or, or publisher or anything like that who's called out. So then I kind of think towards the role that IABs can play and, and, and partners in bringing that standard or policy to, to market and that consistency um, where, where it enables and empowers advertisers and publishers and tech companies to, to move forward and, and put sustainable marks and like branding on, on everything that they're doing and challenge those who aren't actually doing it. And as you said, like the best form of flattery is imitation, right? So the hope is that if we're doing it in the right manner, others will follow because not only is it more sustainable for the environment, but it is for our digital ad ecosystem, whether it be reduction in fraud and, and loss of, of ad revenue because of that through to um, less on the page, but more getting to premium publishers because we're reducing the supply chain as well. I mean, the good thing is you can't get accused of greenwashing with media decarbonisation. So you, you could do that now. <laughs> That's the other thing, isn't it? Greenwashing, sort of from a message perspective, is quite complex. But everyone in this room can commit to media decarbonisation. You don't have to have a sustainability message to do that. But that could be our first step on that journey. I was wondering how many of you are currently handling sustainability issue in your day-to-day -day business, in your day-to-day -day agenda. Can you please just 
put your hands up. One, two, three, four, five. Interesting. Um, can, um, do you have any question for our speak speakers? Any of you? No. Yeah, Andrew. Uh, yeah, where are you? Where Anthony, sorry. Here is a microphone. Anthony Ketzer. Where does the panel think we should start with standards? Ivy Tech Lab is ready to take on this challenge. Um, I, Brian and I have spoken personally about this. I think this is not just good for our industry, it's for the future of our kids, our kids' kids, our kids' kids' kids. Um, and we can look them in the eye and say that we try to do something about making this world a better place. Where do we start with standards? I guess I should answer that one. <laughs> um, I think that the programmatic supply chain represents probably 40 or 50% of all the energy consumption in digital advertising. And I think that the key protocols that power programmatic are things like OpenRTV, which is a standard that Tech Lab manages, things like as.txt or sellers.json or all of these things that Tech Lab has done that should be cleaning up the supply chain haven't quite gotten there. And we need more teeth. We need commitments from every company that as you start down the path of the next version of OpenRTB, it's with a sustainability mindset. As we think about what a cookie-less world looks like, are we going to send as many cookies back and forth? Um, Dave Pickles, who's the CTO of the Trade Desk, said, uh, the way we sync cookies is a, uh, a scourge for humanity or something like that. It's, a, it's a very strong words. Is the new post-cookie future going to be more sustainable? Hopefully it's better for privacy. Hopefully it's more compliant. But I think we have an opportunity to tell our story as an industry about responsibility, about how we're making journalism better, how we're helping consumers find responsible products. There's a whole lot of things that we could plug in. It has to be all of us, but those protocols and things like prebid.org that, that powers so much of the programmatic ecosystem have to build this into the foundations of this industry or we're never gonna get there because standards for all the problems with them are how we all speak the same language. And that's your job and it's something that we all need to support you in doing and we all need to make some sacrifices. We're not gonna be able to do all the crazy stuff we've been doing for the past 20 years, and, and that's okay, as long as we still make our businesses work. So I'm not saying necessarily fewer video ads. I'm saying that we can make video ads better, and we can have fewer ads on the page, and we can do things to make consumer impact higher. Um, you may know companies like Adelaide and Lumen that are doing attention measurement. There's a lot of ad units that don't actually get any attention. They don't work. Let's get rid of them. They're just wasting carbon. So it's things like that that I think you can, you can really help us all put in actual technical terms that work. Yeah, yeah. Can, you know, community extensions to RTD and measure carbon footprint. We can, we can expand sellers.json to start to capture the hops and measure the carbon footprint of that. Let's do it along the way. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But you are talking okay. about future, about post-cookie, and when, when you talk about future, you guys from the, uh, the industry, you talk about a lot of things that are, that are absolutely not sustainable. We, we were talking during the panel of, of NFT, for example, yeah. or, or of, of this uh, future um, yeah, ad market growth. How, how can we make this sustainable? I mean, you know, if we are... In the same time, trying to reduce things that we are currently doing, yeah. but also imagining things that are terrible for the planet. I think, I don't, but like say NFTs, for example, and the metaverse, what you'll see when you start to look into it, there's, there's a big backlash, particularly in the artist community around NFTs, because some of them were horrified at the volume of carbon that was generated from their artworks being sold. So, um, so I think, Again, consumers are starting to challenge this in pockets. And Ethereum are bringing out Ethereum 2.0, aren't they? Hopefully this year, and with the view that it will reduce the impact um, of the blockchain by like 99%. And they have really committed to decarbonizing their system. So I think, again, really top line, there's publishers out there, particularly say in uh, the UK, so Lad Bible, 
very big social platform. Lots of publishers are selling NFTs and commercializing them. They will not commercialize NFTs until we've got Ethereum 2.0 in place. And I think that's where it's about just educating ourselves, asking the questions and saying, actually, we do care about a net zero society. We care about the impact that we're having in the world. If that means we have to wait 12 months for the technology to improve to be more carbon efficient, then we're going to make that choice and we're going to be proud of the choice that we make. Would be I think one, one uh, thing that would help everybody is give visibility on all the companies are on our real, real impact of our media plans. If I see in a ranking that the top 10 companies have this uh, carbon footprint, I'm sure that if you see in that list that you are in the top three, you will get action on that. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we see from somebody outside the, the companies, from the industry, from the media part, a ranking of companies, yeah. I'm sure that that will put everybody uh, moving forward. Yeah, great mm -hmm. idea. Brian, you want to do the ranking? Yeah, and, <laughs> I, and I think you have to do a realistic, um, let's say, a reflection on, on technology. And there is definitely some, and even you don't think of, that they that is contributing positively um, towards sustainability, uh, even in the NFT thing. I can think of many, many, many uh, applications with NFTs that are carbon positive. Okay. Um, because, th for example, they, they it, it um, avoids the traveling or um, avoids other things, um, and and you can easily uh, have NFTs. I mean, speaking of cryptocurrency and all that, let's say mm, th this 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 things is is a problem to sustainability or at least some of them or most of them. But um, if you think of the application that will follow and that are more developed in, for example, the, the NFT area, then um, there can be much contribution. And, and for the next five to 10 years, what do you hope industry will achieve in terms of sustainability? Any, any particular, um, um, any particular chantier en français? <laughs> oui. <laughs> um, at least I have sort of uh, a dream that, that CPC is not only cost per click, but carbon per click. Okay. And that we have the complete transparency. I hear you, mm. Brian, but um, I'm, I, I think we still have to do a lot to educate and to, to deliver this transparency and to deliver these things and, um, and, and, and also have this mind shift, uh, this less is more, less... Uh, um, less complexity on the OEM side, and I think you've, you've made already a big, big uh, step towards that because you're making things more simple and more direct to consumer, um, less sophistication, less was what you mentioned on the technological, on, the, on our side, on the agency side, the creative side, and um, yeah, less, less distribution in the end or more, even more efficient distribution um, regarding the channels. Anyone else wants to um, yeah, pick one direction and to share one big idea for the industry to uh, scale up uh, sustainability? I think Andrew. Yeah, I think it, it goes back to almost Tony's question as well, is like it shifts from a nice to have to a must have. Um, and that can be a combination of things of like bringing more transparency, bringing accreditation, certification. Like there are loads, obviously scope threes, providing measurement, seeing this as partnered yesterday with a company called Deconomy, which is a fintech environmental agency as well. There's loads out there and, and it's kind of like recognizing that, that work and the transparency they're bringing, but also enforcing it in the sense of like, it can't be woke or a cool thing to have sustainability. It just has to be embedded in the way we do business and the way we plan campaigns and the way we set up our supply chains. I think we need to get into the mindset that sustainability is about innovation and it's about commercial success and it's setting your business up to thrive in the next eight years because the climate emergency is here. We can't sidestep it. The regulations come in. Consumers' expectations are moving higher and higher. So if you want to thrive in a net zero economy by 2030, you have to innovate and you have to innovate with sustainable principles. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. I think that... Me. No, I never disagree with you. Uh, no, I think sustainability is going to be a cool thing. 
I think it's literally going to cool the planet. And I think also it is really, really cool to walk around in my new job, I guess, to talk to people because there's so much passion. Mm. Because if you can go tell your kids that, you know, yeah, I had to fly to Madrid, you know, twist my arm, <laughs> eat tapas. Um, but I'm doing it for a really good cause. I'm doing this to make the planet possibly better for 150 million people who will be climate refugees if I don't get on this airplane. That's what we all need to remember, that this is probably the best thing that we can do as people in our jobs, is make the world better for our kids, maybe even for ourselves, because climate change is now. And so I'm, I'm, I think I'm cool doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I think the few people who raise their hands, you're really cool. I think Gonzalo, you're cool. Alex, you're cool. Obviously, Laura's cool. But we're cool because this is something we get to do every day as part of our job. We get paid to do something that feels good. And I would just say that that's the change, is that it, it's going to be something that everyone realizes at one point or another, that this is something really good, moral, ethical, important that we can do in our roles every day that will have a massive impact on the planet. But this is scary. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Gonzalo, after that, what is going to be your next step? <laughs> I think, yeah, that's it. So I think uh, data will help, technology will help, okay, and that is going to be part of the transition on everybody being there. And I think we will put it in our priorities once we know that it has an economic impact in our budget. Okay, so the day that I see that my budget maybe is 10% uh, cheaper doing that option that is also greener, I will take that decision. But until I don't have an impact in the budget, I think the, the advertisers will not move forward. I think that will be a big impact in our pockets, and, and, and then it's going to be serious for everybody. Yeah, this is realistic too. So we have quite a challenge here. Uh, anyone want to ha have the last question? Yes. Can I have a microphone, please? Thank you. Uh, it's Sonia from IEB Canada. And I, I just wonder, you know, talking, you know, Laura, you were talking about greenwashing, and it's something that's come up since 2018 at Cannes. There's a big movement around that. And my question is around uh, brand safety for the publishers, and whether or not you envision that the publishers will eventually have some sort of an algorithm that prioritizes some sort of sustainable advertisers on their site. So do you see, and I'm looking at Gonzalo as well, just because you, know, you were talking about the pressure that an advertiser might have in order to you know, make more moves towards sustainability. Is that something that, I mean, maybe that's a question for Brian, but yeah. is there a prioritization in the open RTV and, and you know, something <coughs> that, that maybe tech lab and you know, data transparency.org, that type of thing only for advertisers? Yeah, you're, you're, you're ruining my, my secret master plan. I mean, <laughs> don't tell everybody. Um, but yeah, phase one of what we're working on is how do we go up the value chain? So from the marketer through the publisher. But there's another direction too, because we're all connected. And so that value chain goes the other way. That $7.1 trillion number that we influenced as an industry, we are influencing consumer behaviors. Imagine that Twitter, I don't know if Elon will do this, but what if they said, well, we want to know the carbon impact of all of our brands. And if we're going to advertise for a big, you know, gas car, you know, we're going to have a, a carbon price. And we're going to actually change the effective CPM of that ad because of it. Or maybe we won't work with certain advertisers. You're seeing this in France right now, where if you have a car on a billboard, you have to say, almost like it's a cigarette warning, you should walk or take the metro, you know, and you have to, this is real, and you, they have a climate law in France. Of course they have a climate law in France, and it says you have to put emissions on the billboard. Take that, the logical next step is it should factor into your decisions. 
And so that to me is incredible because think of the incentives. If you're a marketer and you're working really hard to make your business sustainable, you now have a preference in advertising. Consumers will see your ads more. You will pay less for marketing. Think about that as a way that we as an industry can impact consumer behavior on a global basis. That will drive more systemic change than anything else we can do. So I love this idea. And I have no idea how to do it, but that's part of my secret master plan is like, it says like 2022, decarbonize media, 2023, figure that out. So um, <laughs> definitely working on it. <laughs> Laura, you want to answer from your own perspective? Oh. It's just interesting. So when I started my role in January, what we've started doing is climate action sessions. And anyone from any level comes into a room and we just brainstorm. We take away the parameters of real life and say, what would you like to achieve and how can we change the industry? And it's quite interesting because actually quite sort of naturally people were saying, can we put aside a percentage of our spend and say we'll only spend with green publishers? So I feel like, and th this is the thing about sustainability, it does need to come from leadership, but I think from a grassroots level, our people want this. I think mm -hmm. if we need to address the talent drain that we have in the industry, so 72% of Gen Zs do not want to work for a brand that does not have sustainability baked in. So if our industry is to survive, we need to evolve. And I think, yeah, I would say, again, it doesn't have to come from a head of sustainability. Ask your people what they want, um, and they will, you'll be amazed at some of the creative and how ambitious people in your business are in terms of tackling our, our, our structures at the moment. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. You wanted to add something? No. Yeah? 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 Go ahead. No, so the thing is, I completely agree. So consumers want it. So the thing is that we have to act on that direction. Okay, mm. so, and at the end, consumers will select brands based on their sustainability uh, actions. So I think that is really important to take it in consideration. So it's all about, it's, it's, it's a lot about ranking. But I'm just afraid ranking is not fully compatible with uh, collaboration because you want to be first. So then you are afraid of sharing your knowledge, no? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, okay, I'm not such an optimistic yeah. at this point, but I have to work on this and I will definitely thanks to you guys. Thank you very much you to much. five of you for your you. insights you. and presence. Thank you very much. <laughs>